Robin Tzu and who would like to start clarifying some of the things they understood and they haven't understood just yes. Okay, uh, I read the, the that this week project is, uh, will be creating a data warehouse for the speed traffic department uh, that wants to uh, be able to collect traffic data for, I think, six, for different purposes. So the, we ask, our data warehouse should be able to take into account future needs and will be organized such that uh, a number of queries we can be used. So especially the tools or approach that we'll be using is uh, extract load transform framework with I think uh, I think with DBT. Yeah. So that is what, what I learned from the document we'll be creating a data warehouse this week. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Anyone want to elucidate more on the tasks and what possible challenges, what they don't understand, or like anybody who has read it and haven't understood have question can also ask before I start going through. In my the, the way that I use this one is to understand how much you know how light or difficult it is to understand some some parts so that I can either spend more time or less time. So anyone wants to say yeah, just yes. Yes, uh, I think I did not understand more of the concepts like uh, the the tools that we'll be using, but I trust that I will understand more by reading the materials even and yeah. I don't know if you you will answer to some of the questions. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to go explain what they understood? You know, almost always it helps if you have ex tried to explain it to other people and then you would start i would you would start understanding what you have understood what you have not understood it, it probably is the project is more um easier at least for from understanding perspective um okay so I mean, I could actually, you could actually start from here. I'm going to restructure it such that it's slightly more, you, you can start from that. Yeah, today we are, we are slightly not having hands. Is, is that because it's clear? So is there anyone who has read it and then slightly confused? You can just only type it also. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. Or how easy it is when you read it. Okay, if, uh, is not that much clear. Anyone else who has tried to read it and who didn't, who had a um, challenge to understand it? Okay. I mean, the, the data, of course. Okay, so that means it's the silence is because it's not clear. It's not, it's not because it's clear, right? Yeah, okay. So can I assume then it's, it's not clear because either people didn't read it or it's not clear for some people. Okay, but then you have to ask me as I explain. Because if you don't ask me, then there's no way that I, uh, you know, how much you don't understand it. So, uh, yes, yes, yeah. 
yes, I have a question about the data that we be using. I I didn't I did not understand that and I followed the link actually, but it's not clear. Okay, I will come to that. I think I, I'm just saying you can ask me like that, like more question so that it's clear by the end. Okay. So if I don't get questions, then I assume it's clear. So uh, so I'm gonna explain what it is. Of course. So the part, so the the topic of this week is data engineering. And data engineering, normally you would know that the data comes until you organize it. It's usually kind of as a sport, if it's a structured in, in a way like transactional or something, it's in a database or you put it in, in some kind of folder. And then most of the time you try to do it afterwards and it gets harder because you lost um, a lot of insight about that data. You haven't uh, planned it as either. Um, so there, there are a number of issues like that. And then really when you are small, it's okay, right? Because the data that you're collecting is basically usually are small. But when you are actually in a proper business, then it becomes really the most important part because what you want is you want to really understand what's going on. Like, you know, your money really involves about understanding your flow. If it is, you know, basically just from department to department, emails, like if you, you know, if you are hiring someone and they are responsible for sales, you know, you don't want to wait until they sell something because, you know, sometimes it might not work or, but you want to know how much effort they're putting. What is their conversion? For example, how many emails are they sending? Because they can tell you like, ah, we have sent an email, but if they sent two emails, you know, then it's basically, you would expect, you know, that that's not enough, right? So you'll be able to, you wanna be able to see dashboards, you wanna be able to see as a business, as a manager, almost always you wanna, con you wanna be able to have a summary of it. And then the summary of it depends, of course, how, uh, you know, the, the, in the terms of the complexity, in terms of your own awareness, how you interpret data. But ultimately, the uh, data person, an IT person normally, but now the data engineering, because it's data-driven things, have to organize the data in such a way that it's accessible for downstream users. So for a data engineer, basically data is a citizen because they don't know how the data is going to be used. So if you think of it as, is you know people it's like the data engineer being a politician it's really about it's not about oh because one person is paying tax so i'm going to treat them well and if one you know one person is not kind of unemployed i'm going to treat them bad it's not like that it's definitely you have to be able to plan with the data concept because sometimes you know exactly what is the data is used sometimes you don't know most of the time you don't know how the data will be used so you just have to st start from a very proper model. It's called data model, okay? So in just like a database model, you know, you have different database models, how you structure your database, because, you know, if you don't structure it, it becomes inefficient. You know, some of you who have worked on database, you probably would know the design of a database is the most important part. Um, and if it's not well structured, it's not scalable, it's sluggish, you know, it's costy and so many things. So. In the modern sense, in our in our current situation, it's actually even more important. It's probably the most sought after um, also field. In any place, you must start from a data uh, organization in data engineering. And most people even just don't go to up to a data science or machine learning engineering. They just actually at the analyst level. So the structure is that there is a data engineer and then uh, from, of course, there is before that, there is like infrastructure management and then from infrastructure data engineer, but usually they may overlap infrastructure and data because they, you know, they are similar in some smaller scale uh, level. And then analytics engineer. So the analytics engineer prepares the data just like the data is preparing for everyone. Uh, the, the analytics engineer much more works on making the, data suitable for analytics and then you have analytic uh, you know data analysts 
and then usually business analysts then so business intelligence then usually people may stop even there some companies they may not go even up to um machine learning engineering and, and all that so that's the essential and in this case so we are giving you a very the usual flow i mean this really represents so many uh, things and in a modern a startup call it so now you and your colleague joined to create an ai startup that deploys sensors to businesses collect data from all activities in businesses people's interaction traffic flows smart appliances you know and all of that and you know the whole essential element of this ai startup they must have a very strong data collection and data organization and data quality check and then from that you would have of course analytics dashboards as well as also insights that are predictive analysis for example in the case of like when will the sensor will you know will thing or if it's about on people you know how many people do you expect just like the the same as you did for sales you might start kind of predicting the number of people that are crossing a door you know things like that right so you then you know the basically this is the you're collecting data and in this case one of your client is supposed to be a traffic department a city traffic department that wants to collect traffic data using uh, drones uh, that are swarm drones in this case there are 10 drones that are flying on intersections in different parts of the city and in this case was just the data came from of course greece but you can assume it, it can be from anywhere from a number of locations in the city and see uh, use the data collected for improving traffic flow in the city and for a number of other undisclosed projects you can imagine there are so many things even uh, to find uh, you know like the uh, illegal parkings and all that but more than that also it could be just like a, a car that's stolen you know and you can check from the driving uh, the driving kind of the the pass perspective or the speed checkup and you know you can really think of a number of use cases uh, for this data because you are basically collecting identifying and 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 kind of mapping the trajectories of this data so the data that you have is of course the uh, first the drone took footage it's a very high resolution drone but then that drone image is then analyzed through an ai system that actually extracted what is called the um, the trajectory data you know? so a trajectory data is kind of you would have a car car type it's distinguished you know automatically and and all of that so that's basically it's now turned from an image to basically some kind of non-rectangular but uh, data that is kind of um and let's say you can put it in csv format or in json format okay and what they're asking you is that because they are expecting to to fly these drones every time and they want to organize they want to cross map you know in the future they want to of course collect from other sensors that are probably installed from traffic cameras that are in the city and a number of others you know you can imagine just cameras street cameras that the government uh, has put all of that you want to at some point integrate so you you know this thing needs to be modeled or at least has to be told how to be uh, how the at least the first part, the second part of it, which is from image. Once, once from image, you can directly go to this AI and then you extract the trajectory and then you have to organize that for multiple use, okay? And because of that, we are using the ELT framework. You know, the, the two things are ETL or extract, transform and load. Normally, when you think of this kind of models, don't think of them as, oh, like, oh, extract once, load once and transform once no it's not that it's just basically it's a model it's a model means it cannot be applied 100 times in it like so that elt for on one same data it can go through elt and then from that it can go to another elt it can go to another elt it's because what really elt or what what kind of etl is representing is that there is a source of data that source you don't have to think of it as only raw it could be like even the most processed data and then and then from that what do you do the question is that the model is that in the etl sense you first assume you are gonna not you're gonna the next step after you apply this etl what you're doing is that once it's loaded you're gonna directly consume it from the 
the consumers that basically in this case it could be like data scientists or analytics uh, department they are basically you are expecting them to consume without that much transformation so basically a clean data while in the framework of elt it's different you are extracting it and putting it in a data in a load usually is in a warehouse so that basically and you put it such that you then have told the transformation is easy to do so that means you are choosing carefully your uh, your database such that or your data warehouse such that you can apply transformation in the data warehouse so you can use basically from one data you can use multiple types like by transforming inside the data warehouse that's what this really is about it so it's about assuming do i have a database that is capable powerful enough to do some kind of transformation inside it if that is the case then you use elt and that's mostly this this day is like the case but then if you are assuming no i'm like my database is like kind of okay but not that much but i have a, a kind of a computing platform that i actually can transform and i know what for what use case that i'm going to use it and in that case usually the etl but etl and elt are also not as you can imagine they are not completely separated you can in every e there may be elt uh, etl in itself because you know in in between el there might be t itself because you might not you might just apply some kind of transformation before loading but and then you apply more transformation so so there is another framework the etlt you know it's, it's a lot more. so don't think of it as a boundary hard thing but it's just a way of framework of thinking and the real framework of thinking is whether you are expecting to do lots of transformation on the data in the data warehouse if that is the case then the framework you are using for all the terminology it's elt if you are not expecting as much to do transformation in the data warehouse but to do transformation earlier before you put it in the data warehouse then it's called etl that's basically and and etlt is just basically the usual case then a mix of that and the usual case actually that one okay so the data is this one and that basically as i said it's a drone image that has basically taken um on this 10 intersections in a city in greece and each of them are basically representing the drones kind of downward view in a rectangular way and that data is extracted and put into a csv file and you can find of course these 10 locations here and the dates for each of the location there are a number of dates uh, that you have and also time okay and you basically can collect that data or download everything as one zipped file okay so that's the data you start with so it's basically a trajectory file um it's just a csv that you will know what it is and so basically yeah uh, the question. Uh, data, yeah, the data. I mean, the download button doesn't work. Do we have to yeah, like? Yeah, I have to do this one. One. Uh, so it's eight or. So you have to yeah. select all drones, yeah. then time, and then time. They got. Then it will work. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it's just yeah. You have to select um, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any question? Do do we need to select all dates and times? Sorry? Or do we need to select all dates and times? I mean, I, no, I can select one as well. I can select another date, select like that, it will work. But I'm, for your case, depending on how much you want to work, to see, you know, of course, for testing, you just you can use one of them. But then for actually, ultimately, you should just have all of it organized in your data warehouse so that it is complete. Yeah. Thank you. And again, depending on the size and everything that, that you are able to work on. But for testing, just use one. Any question? Okay. So hopefully everything is clear and that's what the data. But also there are some other data sets that you know, one could refer to if you are. Um, and so, there is, you know, this is where like your creativity also is measured. For example, what you get is a latitude or longitude, but you might enrich that data. You know, as a data engineer, almost always you want to provide downstream users so much nice data that they can use, right? So when you are 
loading it into your data warehouse, you could actually convert a longitude and latitude to a city name. And it's even other things, it's temperature, it's population size. You can enrich, you can create basically other table that or on the fly dynamically, you can enrich data, right? So those are all your, like depending on your time, that's the data engineer's kind of quality, uh, how it's measured. Of course, the very first essential part is to do it, just what's asked, but you can enrich data based on a number of things. Like um, in this case, for example, that the, the car type, the, whatever you will have, you can enrich based on that as well by looking, you know, by looking at, for example, model it was produced, whatever. You don't have to. I'm just saying that data is really valuable as it gets merged with different uh, elements. So storing latitude and longitude is important, but then having longitude, latitude have its name, its place, you know, what it's represented, that's also another, um, another value for it. So here there are many different, uh, so one is, for example, how to visualize this kind of data. There is one um, uh, package that's kind of developed also for this. So you will see if you just um, go there and this one, you would basically get this kind of, of course, data. So this is much more of on um, the type, whatever you select, and it basically represents the, the time control and, and all that. So, but this is, this is not necessary. As I said, this is much more to, to tell you from how much people downstream for visualization, for example, how they can use, but for modeling, there are even many other things that people used. There are different references on that you can check. People have used it for multiple reasons, okay? Okay, expected outcome, of course, is create and maintain DAGs. DAGs are basically in airflow terminology, you know, when you are, because you are using airflow to synchronize, uh, to basically schedule. So any anything that is kind of crawled, you know, whenever you, you if you have used to wake yourself up in the morning, uh, that is basically like a, an alarm, that's basically a schedule. You scheduled something to happen at certain event. Now that what that event it can be time, but it can be also an event something else like for example when a data is loaded. That that can be just an, a trigger like just like uh, when it's in the morning at seven a.m. right so just like that so DAGs basically are this uh, way of expressing schedules in air floater, but in anything that has tree structure like do this after that as you know whatever in a programmatic sense it's called. You know, this is the a tree, which is the, um, uh, as, uh, uh, whatever a cyclic graph, it's a graph uh, thing. So just, it's a terminology for that and how it's basically, um, like in the airflow sense, it's basically what the elements, the codes that you write to schedule something. And so it's almost always, you have to just know, dug it everywhere is used. Um, so direct it. A cyclic graphs, I think um, that's uh, a cyclic graph. That means it's not looping to each to itself, uh, but it's also directed. That means from one to another. Um, so and then it's a graph. Mohammed, uh, I kind of came late. Uh, I don't know what airflow mean or what what is used it's a for scheduler. A scheduler. It's like an alarm clock, but there are schedules. Uh, your your everything. So now this is a bigger system. It's it's the most complicated. Uh, call it alarm, but it would schedule everything in your pipeline. And it basically schedule means it runs, and you can see it. You know when it is kind of running, you will be able to see it, and um, it's you can schedule it across time or based on events. And you write codes that just does everything and then it doesn't matter what code you're writing it just basically it has you can write it in python you can write it in bash you can write it in, every, in anything and basically schedules uh, basically by schedule you know it's just like an alarm clock it does whatever when you want it but what that when is also generic it, it can be time it can be event it can be anything does that make sense so it's a scheduler Yes, uh, for example, if if I uh, if I set it uh, 
to trigger when a certain output came. So yeah, with that's that, event based. Yeah, that's event based trigger. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think you it's basically the most important part. You know, it's a system that you write code for it, and it's the code that's called DAG. So inside that code, you define everything. You know, it, you can really launch the whole entire Amazon itself if you want to. It doesn't matter. You basically, it basically just provides you a computing space, and then it runs on that. So for example, if it is a Bash script, then it provides you a Bash terminal, and it runs whatever you write inside there. And when it runs, it's just what it does. So at a given specified time, it does. It runs and out, and you can save the output in in a number of ways. So it's basically a full system to s arrange or schedule everything in your in your pipeline. So in this case, transformations can happen. For example, when the data data comes, it it can transform, and the transformation on the database can be run, you know, on that. And so you can have like a Postgres uh, DAG. That basically is means written in, in SQL and it just is run inside that. And it can be a Python when something happens, for example, um, when someone accesses something and you know if, if it really puts that access is kind of some kind of event and it based on that it can transform something. You know, it can do whatever you want. It just provides you a space to compute, and then within that you can run uh, whatever code you want. Okay, under net. Uh, or where does our code live? For example, if you want, if you want to like uh, do certain task uh, on a trigger or like a chronological task, uh, so where do we write that that code uh, to do that? I mean, is it, it cloud it, it gives you a folder? Oh, yeah, it can be in your computer. It's okay. It's like it's a, okay. just a it can be a Docker instance initialize. Uh, of course, it needs a database so that it can manage its state. You know, just like an alarm without its state knowing or what time it is, it doesn't know. So it has to be like what has been run, what didn't run, whatever it needs to monitor. So it needs a database. And so you basically can spin it in, in your even environment, in your computer. And basically then it will know exactly, then you will put also the code that you're writing, you will put it in a folder, um, then that's it. And then in that from that folder, it reads all the DAGs and then it also pairs them, all those tags, all the tags that it discovers with the time that you have set up, if, if you set up. You can enable, disable, you know, it has a lot of options. Okay, is it like uh, uh, a code that we can run on our machine, not uh, just a cloud service that is yeah. uh, going to be triggered to trigger another service or to do all sorts of stuff? You, you can, both are. I mean, anything that you can run in the cloud, you can run in your computer, right? There's nothing. The cloud is just another computer. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you. So it's like uh, even in the cloud, when it runs, you are install, uh, initializing some machine, and then you're running on it. You know, the only difference between a cloud machine and your machine is that the cloud machine, it's sitting somewhere you don't care, and someone is maintaining it. And your machine, when it's hot, you have to care. And if it requires more memory, you don't have it. In the cloud. Oh, okay, I can, you can buy more. I like, you know it's kind of that's only scalable. It's just so scalable. But ultimately, if it is Ubuntu machine, it's the same Ubuntu machine that you have. But it is networked probably. Just like if you are, if you are in an office, your computer can be networked with others as well. If you have, you know, uh, but yeah. So it's kind of like that. You can really install anything and run Airflow, DBT, everything in your. Last time, actually, we do that. So everybody runs in their computer in their machine. Okay. Uh, so, one more question. Do yeah. it, so that the is that does that mean uh, we need to have a Docker environment to install the image? It's of much Airflow? easier. I think oh. it, it's it's much easier, and also if you don't have it, you have it. You must have it. Like Docker environment is just necessary these days. It's like uh, without it, it's just basically too much hassle. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. That is it. You create and maintain Airflow DAGs. That means you run some of the things and you create Apache Airflow, DBT, Redash. Redash is now a programmatic dashboard maker. So that means you can really write. You don't, you know, it's just, it can draw like 
it's a dashboard you can build on. Like if you have used Tableau or if you have used, you know, Power BI or anything that you use to display, then this is just very similar. But on top of that, the code that is used to plot a plot is can be now Git's uh, version. You know, usually, almost always, you have to think like that. If you create something by hand, and if you can't version it, it's very much not in the spirit of this scalable format. That means now, if you migrate, so the next week, one of the week, you are actually migrating this thing into another data warehouse. In that sense, if you have done it by hand, how can you migrate? So it's almost always you have to think about not only that it's beautiful and you can do it, but also can it be versionable? Even the data, is it versionable? The model, is it versionable? The thing, you know, all of that, it's, it has to be versionable. It has to be code oriented. Nowadays, even a machine is up and down based on a code, right? So based on some kind of, and then that code is versionable. That's that's what clouds, it's called cloud formation in, um, in AWS. So think about almost always these things, the purpose of them is that, to, to be able to really control programmatically. Because if you can programmatically control, you can version it, copy it, duplicate it, you know, you can do anything. Because in the code space, you have so many things. But if, in the, if it is in the, from API, kind of like from a GUI perspective, you have done it, then you can't do it. You know, that's the problem. So, yeah. And yeah, you would basically, what you are going to be learning is really enterprise grade data engineering uh, using Apache tools and Databricks tools. Um, but we don't use, so in this case, Redash is from uh, Databricks. Okay, and the tasks are, of course, very, um, it requires you basically spin a MySQL or a Postgres. So I would actually recommend just for now, you use Postgres and so that next time, because we would ask you that. Uh, and then an orchestration air service, Airflow, and an LT tool. So this is, GBT is basically, it's, you would love it. It's just a way of, it's a, you can you can basically write code to transform in a and it would manage itself so it's beautiful and not only that it gives you for all your data uh, it gives you a documentation freely that basically means like you can deploy your your data documentation your transformation um very easily and then a reporting environment redash re re which is basically a dashboard and everything has to be fully dockerized of course because you can change from aws to google to Azure, you know, it has to work. You shouldn't, you should, it shouldn't be say it, from your machine to cloud, it should just be straightforward to go. If it's dockerized, that's the case. Okay. So the complete tasks are you will create a DAG in Airflow and it becomes easier once you see it. Right now you'll feel like, what is this thing? But it's basically a DAG is just a Python script, it could be, or a bash script that uses bash or Python operator to load data files into your database. So that means you're not even just loading to the database yourself. You're actually, because as I said, you might change to something and you wanna, you wanna not do it anything you don't wanna do by hand. In this sense, everything you want to do it by code, like you, are, you want to orchestrate it so that you can, if you change, then it becomes really a simple change, okay? So you are even loading after downloading them into your machine wherever, you can even just delegate them you know, basically you, you get the data, you put it and you load, you load it. That is one DAG that just loads the data into data warehouse. Uh, and you, you have to think about production development in the staging environments that, you know, that because if, if, if now someone is using the data and you want to edit, you know, you don't, you don't want to edit on the part that people are using. So you may need to create different version, um, production or staging and development. And then connect DBT. Now DBT is for transformation with your now data warehouse, which is you already have loaded the data and write transformation codes uh, for the data you can execute again via Bash or Python. And in Airflow again, again, that's just, you can schedule it or you can just, it can be also one time only that just an alarm. Sometimes you can do it one, one time. Write proper documentation for your data models because each code in the DBT is called models because it's just one type of transformation. And so, so that if you write a proper documentation, that means you, you, you write the description while it is whatever, when you see it in the, from the docs UI, then it becomes easy and also the data lineage becomes easier, okay? And what kind of transformation you do? The very first simple transformation is that counting, counting the number of cars, that's one. Just, you know, from the table, just counting is one. It could be like, you know, 
counting by the number of cars, by the type of cars. So you can think of many useful, uh, so we make it vague so that if you are confused, you can ask, but you can think of how to transform some useful things to start with, you can think of. Check additional modules of dbt because dbt has lots of things to support, for example, for data quality monitoring, uh, great expectations, dbt expectations or uh, read data. You know, so these are kind of things that you could read from um, dbt that might, might help you, okay? Connect the reporting environment. Uh, in this case, a redash, right? You just, again, spin a redash and then you connect it such that you can display a transformer data, for example, if you have counted based on a type of car, now you can display in the uh, like the number of cars histogram like that, right? So then you can connect it's and again, it's a code that that plot is actually some kind of code. It's a, a SQL code that you would write and that can be versionable in itself as well. So if you now move to any other system, even is not redash, so that same code can be used uh, if, if you are using equivalent um, systems, all right? And then, of course, you would write a short article about your approach and what were the most important decisions uh, along the way. Because when you do a lot of things, just whenever you have to decide something, write it. Because work and task really means a lot of decision. You know, we are just decision machines, uh, actually. Every time we have to decide what to do, you know. And the guideline is to help you, of course, to make some decisions. But you still, even with this, you have to make a lot of decisions and you just have to, important decisions, key decisions that you have to make. Um, you have to write and just report it just as usual in blog post. Okay, then consider the following elements in Airflow, you know, templates, dbt, automate the generation of dbt docs. I think it's just easy. Explore macros if you can, automate the dbt Airflow. Again, all of this right now is just as always you say, it's daunting. You don't know it and I'm just talking about dbt, redash, Airflow, which probably some of you never heard of any of them before. but as you have already noticed, there's a cycle. By Friday, you're gonna get used to them, right? And it's just, that's the beauty of it. You have never heard of them, how useful you, your life was okay without them, but when, once you know them, they become part of your life, right? So it will be fun. And the tutorials are just, will this one, but then tomorrow you would, you would get introduction about Airflow and DBT, and then afterwards you look at about some other alternatives that there are Snowflakes and Fivetran. Fivetran is for loading into a data warehouse, while Snowflakes is just basically a full data warehouse that is capable, scalable, that's just, you know, really big these days. I don't know, $100 billion, you know, they're just really big. And again, they, because data is big, you know, and how to set up these ones and then using dbt and tableau to build bi dashboard and then also of course data engineering with aws athena and glue now those would be just this is again to introduce you to a wider where this falling right as a data engineer you need to get aware of that as you can see a lot of it is you might be why am i not why are you not telling us about what we do because you just do whatever but it's the ecosystem we want to tell you and then you would know why why what and why you are doing what you're doing and then of course on friday there would be something about uh, retouch okay um so things that you should be considering and checking is just like for your interest you know etl versus elt analytics engineering with dbt data models for scalable models you know data lakes versus data warehouses and uh, stuff like that okay just these are much more for uh, for you to Google sometimes if you want to. And then the usual submissions. Um, again, the submissions are just basically uh, an, an entry, your GitHub code, uh, as well as your um, kind of, these two page marks, if you wanna exit uh, more, it's okay. I think this is much more of the tech stack. So um, I think this should be, this should be, you shouldn't take, I think this one, it's an old thing, like we didn't wanna make you too much stress, uh, but if you wanna write more, write, okay, don't worry. Um, just prepare everything that you're preparing on Wednesdays to help you on, on Saturday to really help you write more, right? Just to make it better uh, for your blog. So, um, and yeah, there are references in each of these sections and hopefully this will be easier. 
now. I think we are run out of time, but any question? Just one question I can, and then we can go. Hopefully it's clear. Yeah, downstream is basically means, uh, I think hopefully if the site's clear, a data engineer is really, really preparing data for consumers. Those consumers are data scientists, machine learning engineers, analytics engineers, analysts, business intelligence unit, you know? So these are all consumers of data. And who would then turn that one into the respective in their own, they have also downstream. So for example, analytics engineer uh, have a downstream users called anal analysts, data analysts and business intelligence unit, right? And data scientists have also some machine learning engineers in them, right? So, and then uh, there are also ML ops, but they don't use the data, they basically do that. But it's this downstream means like exactly those people, those who would consume what you are preparing. So your output becomes input for another team. So, and that, those we call them like any anybody that is consuming the data they are downstream awesome so i think hopefully it's clear again you know through discussions you know i think you're getting the cycle right the whole point is just this it's the discipline the mentality that there is nothing you will not be able to do if you set your mind so yeah you know don't it, it gets easier it gets we're trying we're repeating the same cycle and again and again for 12 weeks so that it gets clear you know you, you will just you will just get the hang of it and you start also understanding why because the mental picture of the mentality of like what it takes to finish a project it's the best you can get in life and once you do that nothing is impossible you know you want to be rich that's another just challenge of a week maybe just okay maybe not a week a six months project but and if you want to build you know uh, like tesla that's what really elon musk does right he knows it he just sleeps even in the industry and just he knows what it takes to do something it's just like anyone um and we it's just getting that hang of pit like the it, it is not most people wrongly attribute so much about knowledge knowledge is just when you do something you can't you can't escape it from knowing it so knowledge counts that way as long as you do it but the discipline and the mental set and the confidence and the you know understanding to actually start doing and to get uh, you know the grind gone is that's really the element and i, I hope that you are you're getting that pattern so with that i will leave you brown okay thank you uh it's a nice presentation uh from my understanding i think this week's challenge is uh, data transformation that focus on data engineering uh what's a mission or a, a question on the uh, what requirement is needed after we transform it or is there a requirement like which feature is more important which which feature is must include exactly. after we transform yeah. it yeah so first is the real 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 point is to create a data warehouse so you know as a data engineer usually it's not to provide insight right so your point is to really organize the data that's your main goal but while you do that you also can provide for your own test as well you also provide some kind of analytics so in this case yeah the number of cars you know the kind of the car type uh, per by you know like the, the number of cars per car type and you can do some many histograms um and also the the ones that are kind of buses versus whatever and those by speed you know you can decompose you just be able to build a dashboard but that dashboard is to help you that your data is organized and everything is working in in, in as a byproduct but the real point point is to really set up a data warehouse that's usually what you are hired for as a data engineer. And then downstream people start using, of course, and creating analysts, for example, create that kind of dashboard. But then you provided them the, a working dashboard platform, so they use it. You have tested it already for them. Now it's clear. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, awesome. Happy data engineering week. Thanks, guys. And we can stop the recording. Bye.